Welcome back to more farming and family. It's about 4.45 in the morning. Um, taking the last steer to the butcher shop to get processed. I was gonna take him in yesterday and then uh, yesterday he decided to get out on me and then we tried to get him back in and he decided to take off across the street to the cornfield and he spent the day over there and we couldn't find him because the corn's about nine feet tall. But he actually came back last night so we got him in and I just locked him around the pole barn here so we could get him loaded easily. So I gotta have him up there by about six. Uh, so they can start getting in process first thing. But, so we'll get him loaded. And then today we're gonna be showing you all about how to, um, how we cut hay with sickle mower, rake it and bale it and row it. So we'll be getting a lot of things done today. We have all, our, all my siblings here this week. So we've been mostly working on hay. Um, then doing other projects around the farm. So you'll get to see a few of them. So it should be a good day. One thing about cattle, when you take them to get processed, you don't want them to get all excited and um, run them around for a while because it makes the meat tough, puts different hormones into the meat. So you want them to be as relaxed as as they possibly can be, which he's, he's doing pretty good. Come on, boy, come on. All right, he got loaded. He went in pretty easy. So yeah, the thing I was saying about you want him to be nice and calm. Um, one of my cousins, they had a uh, steer they were gonna get butchered one time and it ended up Kind of the same thing got out they were able to get it back in but had to chase it around for a while and uh it doesn't it doesn't work they said the meat was just all tough and just not very good quality so you want to be nice and relaxed and he's he's doing good in there but we'll get him up to the butcher shop so this is also the last year that i have for this year's batch for getting butchered um Everything else is up in pasture. I took the five uh, yearling calves. They're up in pasture. So there's plenty of grass to eat up there. Um, and yeah, so next ones will be ready. And uh, I think I have them scheduled for January or February of this coming year. But if anybody's interested in home raised grass fed beef, just let me know. Uh, either comment or when get, get in contact. So just let me know. Made it back to my place, got the steer all dropped off and unloaded. So, sun's coming up. Go have some breakfast and we'll see what else we can find to do this morning. Before we start doing hay today, we're gonna get the corn planter put away and cleaned out. Macy and Maya taking us on a ride. And Macy's friend Addie's here visiting too. Hi. Look both ways.
put away. They're all cleaned up so we can put it away. Got all the row unit boxes taken off, cleaned out the fertilizer system. So we'll put this back in the Quonset and get it tucked away for winter time. Finish getting the air seeder put away. And uh, that'll be one step closer to getting the Quonset filled up again. But try to keep the equipment inside as much as possible so it doesn't get rained on. And if there's ever storms that come up, just keep it all nice and clean out of the elements. So we'll get this backed into its corner. Well, we got quite a few things put back in here. I'm trying to play a game of inches. Once we put everything away for the winter time, we'll snug everything up a lot more. I think the baler will go right in this area. But this is where the combine will sit eventually. Let's see, we got that all snugged up in there. Corn planter. It goes right beside there, back to the wall, back to that wall. And the air seeder and the tool are back there. So, making use of every little spot we can. Alright, now we're actually going to get to some bailing. We're going to kind of do this in reverse order. As usual, check your oil. Make sure that's a-okay. So this I have, still have my bucket on. I need to take it off of the next field, but I gotta, the cylinder droops down. So I gotta switch the cylinders or hydraulics back here and just lift it back up quick. the baler I bought about a month ago. Need to get one to make my own hay. So John Deere 567. The old belts are pretty worn so I put brand new ones on. So they should be good for many many years. Here's what the bale looks like. So pretty good size. I'm gonna finish baling this little part. We had came here last night and it was just getting starting to get too damp so that's why we kind of switched gears this morning got the corn planter all cleaned out got that job done and now we're gonna go bale here and then on another uh, pasture that I normally run cows in um, we're cutting most all of that for hay this year because I have extra pasture that I rented um, so my brother Caleb he's here and he's raking that right now so we'll show you what the raking is like how the hay bale comes out. You can see it's about 
six feet, almost six feet tall, five and a half feet. So it smells great. We'll keep making some more. Finished feeling that little piece. We got uh, eight bales. So that was pretty good off of just a little chunk of land. Um, there's a little spot on the slough behind there. We got 11, so there's 19 up there to bring home eventually. Now we're just going to have a ditch along my way home and then uh, fuel up and head up to the pasture where my brother is raking and start bailing there, see how many we can get made. Well, it's like chains of plans. I had to come up to the field where my brother was raking because the wheel bearing went out on the rake. So running up to Premier and Bottle and they hopefully will have a bearing to fix what went out. But we'll see what we can get them to find for us. Hopefully we can get it fixed and keep raking so I can keep bailing behind them. Right, we're back in luck. Premier had the bearing I needed. So we'll head home, grab a few tools, uh, got to sand, sand down the shaft a little bit just because it was a little corroded and rusted. These were the original bearings, so they lasted. I think Dad bought this rake probably 10, 15 years ago. So they did their what they were supposed to for long enough. So we'll go get these changed and try to get back to raking. We got the rake wheel fixed. This uh, bearing was gone, and it was rubbing right on the inside of this, but didn't hurt the hub at all. So we got two new bearings, put it back together, and. We'll see how how it works. Go do a little more raking. Well, my brother-in-law Tim is with me, so we're gonna keep bailing. See if we can get a few made before evening time. Well, I'm still out here bailing, just uh, making pretty good progress on what we have raked so far. Got some bills out here. All right. Well, decided to call it quits for tonight. I'm gonna head home. Got quite a bit bailed. I don't know. I guess I didn't count, but probably 40 bales or so. So it's doing okay. But gonna head home and we'll uh, continue doing the cutting part since you didn't really get to see the cutting and raking part today. But we'll continue that in the next day. And uh, yeah, we'll keep working on this hay. I'm gonna do a little more baling before we keep cutting. Got my two little helpers with me. Say hi. Hi. What are we gonna do? So welcome back. Today we're going to do some raking. Get raked up into windrows of what I have cut down. But first I got to change a uh, fuel filter. 
this other 4440 that I have. I noticed it started leaking fuel down right under, right under there. Um, sometimes I guess these fuel filters are known to leak these square ones. Um, I had one leak on my other 4440. And I know it's pretty common, so gotta love John Deere fuel filters that don't work like they're supposed to, but it's not too hard to change. We'll get it changed and start it up and make sure it doesn't leak again. But before we get going, we gotta put a little fuel in. These things are pretty good on fuel. You don't have to run your MP engine RPMs very high when you're sick of mowing and raking, so you just kinda take it easy on them so they don't burn through quite so much fuel. But we'll get the sycamore and hooked and get the rake hooked up over there. And we'll start working on all that. There's a little bit more to cut down, but we'll do some raking first this morning. Apparently I didn't prime it quite enough sputtered out so we'll see if this helps I primed it a little more there we go one too many air bubbles in the system well raking isn't gonna go for this morning it got too windy all of a sudden and when I try to go the one direction it doesn't want to pick up the hay and just wants to blow it into the rake and doesn't leave a nice windrow so I'm just gonna bail up quick what I have raked up I just made two windrows and I'll probably go home and uh, gotta do a little grinding get some feed made for the cows and the chickens I'm almost out so we'll change plans a little bit and get something else done for today all right we're out here today we're getting some raking done it's working a lot better since the wind isn't blowing out of the north and making it so I can only rake in one direction but we've got quite a few windrow is made we gotta go to uh, there's kind of a line over there and then a little bit up over on that hill over there and that's all we have to rake for right now I'm gonna try to cut some out of the slough there's some nice tender grass in there cows really like but I'll fo focus on getting the rest of this done so far and getting it bailed up before I cut down more of that so we'll keep going and uh, you know, Give you a little shot of what raking's like. Pretty self-explanatory. I got a 
meeting I gotta go to in town. So just finishing this up and tomorrow morning we'll come back and get some bailing done. Uh, didn't finish raking everything, but it'll be good to get it all bailed up and have that part done. If the windstorm came, all my windrows would be scattered throughout the field. So it's good to get this done now. Tomorrow, get it bailed up and keep going. Then, have a good night.